If you've not been following, is the grapevine. And what is this? What does this have to do? Where, where, where are we going with this? So it involves the Mav Rex, the team that had a chance to get in the play-in tournament, but they thought so little of Kyrie Irving, so little of Luka Doncic that they tanked the last couple of games. Miami was in the play-in tournament. They are now three wins away from the NBA Finals. But the gutless Mark Cuban refusing to even try to get Dallas into position to go on a playoff run because he had no confidence in Luka or that Maverick team, so they tanked. They got punished for it the last couple of games of the year. But that's not the story. The story we have learned that Kyrie Irving, the aforementioned Kyrie Irving, would like the Mavericks to acquire LeBron James. Say what? Yeah, uh, he wants the Dallas basketball team to put LeBron in place with Luka and form a big three because, you know, that always works. That always works. Every big three has always worked unless it hasn't, unless that's an outdated model. But Kyrie's living in the past. It's an outdated model. Uh, Now Irving and James, uh, we know they want to play together. They've been very open about it. They've been playing footsie in the media. LeBron went on record as uh, saying he was very fond of Kyrie uh, during the NBA regular season. would like to reunite with his cadaver running mate from back in the day. So let us discuss the question on this one. The chances that LeBron ends up going to the Mavrex. What are the odds? What are the odds on this? So the Maller Sportsbook odds that LeBron lands in Dallas, I'm going to set the odds at plus 2,500. Now, this is my own sportsbook. Now, plus 2,500 indicates that there is a 4% chance, a little less than 4% chance based on those odds. So that's what I'm going with. I've got Fun Zone, Red Tagged, and Oligarchs. And we will combine all of these things together, and we are going to make more nonsense, which is what this story likely is, just total nonsense, but we'll go with it. Why not? It's its an interesting story, even though it's probably completely made up out of thin air. So, number one. Number one. All right. Number one. Thank you. All right. Now, keep in mind that 4% is better than 0%, to quote, uh, Coop's buddy Jim Carrey there from Dumb and Dumber. Uh, you're telling me there's a chance. Uh, yes, I am telling you there is a chance. Uh, there's always a chance. The Lakers would never trade LeBron James away. And I've heard a lot of gas bags and blowhards since this story started making the rounds saying it's never going to happen because the Lakers would never make a trade. Okay. And I, I, I get that concept because why would you want Tim Hardaway and some other stiffs on the Mavericks? The math would work, right? You could get. Hardaway Jr., not the original Hardaway, although you might want him as well, uh, and some other spare parts on Dallas. You can make it work. Regardless, there is a path. If LeBron wants to join Dallas, that is a massive if. It is called professional courtesy. And the way the NBA has done business, if you reach a certain status, you can do whatever the hell you want. And if LeBron woke up today and said, you know what? I don't want to play for the Lakers. Now, maybe I don't want to play for the Mavericks. Maybe I want to play for the Celtics. And uh, that's where I want to go. Then they would figure out a way through back channels to get LeBron in his preferred destination. It's the way it works. It's the way it's always worked in the modern era of pro bouncy ball. It is the fun zone. It is the midway of madness. Where anything is possible, the silly season, which isn't even officially underway, that starts after the NBA Finals and leading into the NBA Draft and the Summer of Love in free agency and all that. Uh, So come one, come all, fun for all ages, under the big top, which we have to look forward to later on this year. But as far as LeBron, uh, he would have to use a crowbar to say, hey, I don't want to play here anymore. Uh, I I don't like the C-list celebrities that now go to Laker games, so uh, I'm out. Uh, There's a lot of moving parts. Now, the easiest easiest path would be a buyout, and the only realistic path to get LeBron into Dallas would be a buyout situation. LeBron can go to the Lakers and say, 
I really love Tex-Mex. I've got some killer cowboy boots, and I, I, there's a cowboy hat I've always wanted to wear. I can only wear it a couple times a year. If I go to Dallas, I can wear it whenever I want. So put me in, Coach. I'm ready to play. Maybe you can tell the Lakers he's a big fan of the JFK conspiracies, and he wants to live near the grassy knoll. And uh, that's where he would like to be. And he wants to hang out and he'll buy like an apartment right near the library tower. And uh, he'll just he'll just have a field day with that. Uh, but the new CBA, there's supposedly a hard salary cap to avoid having three superstars on the same team. So for this to work, LeBron would have to get a buyout. He would have to take pennies on the dollar. Kyrie Irving would have to take pennies on the dollar compared to the other stars in the NBA. And then Luka would get paid, and the math would work out. Uh, don't hold your your breath. Now, from a basketball standpoint, would it work? Uh, no, it wouldn't even work. Be good for radio and good for gas bags and, and debate shows and things like that. They wouldn't win. If you put LeBron, Kyrie, and Luka together, it wouldn't work. LeBron James is 38 years old, and there's a saying we have on this show, do not let a falling star fall on you. LeBron's a falling star. We saw it against the Denver Nuggets in the playoffs. He was unable to finish those games. The Lakers were in position to win several of those games against Denver, and LeBron did not finish the game. He did not have that closing speed that he used to have at the end of games. He was depending on other people, and those other people didn't get it done. And so that's where we are with that. Now, page two. Would you do business with Kyrie? Based on what we know publicly, all we can go on is what we know publicly. Would you do business with Kyrie Irving if you were an NBA player? And I'm shaking my head, no, 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 no. Uh, if Kyrie Irving was a building, he would be red-tagged, and you would say, not fit for habita- habitation. That's it. You can't live there, that you're done. Uh, there's like a slow methane leak or something like that, and it could be lethal to winning. Uh, you have to get rid of it. You, you, you look at his track record. Forced his way out of Cleveland because he didn't want to sit in the back seat while LeBron was driving the bus. He didn't want to be a uh, a passenger. Okay, fine. So he went to Boston. Remember, initially he was very happy. Remember he, he told the Celtics season ticket holders, oh, man, I love it here. I'm going to re-sign. Uh, then he was behind the scenes hanging out with Kevin Durant, conspiring to go to Brooklyn, and that was the big thing. And then the Nets went out there and fizzled. He then goes to Dallas the Mavericks have so little confidence, as we said, they don't even try to make the play-in tournament. They tank with Kyrie and with Luka Doncic on the team. Kyrie Irving is guilty. There's a term called paltering, uh, and that is what Kyrie is guilty of, misleading by telling the truth. Like He tells a version of the truth. It's kind of like in real estate, the shady real estate agent, that when you're going and looking at the house, they oh yeah, there's been a lot of people that have been interested in this house, uh, and the uh, the actual answer is no one wants the house because the house should be condemned. It's in the bad part of town. Uh, there's cockroaches all over the place. There's termites in the walls. But the real estate agents, oh yeah, this is, this house is. Let me tell you something, man. They're very popular. There's a lot of activity on this house. A lot of activity on this. That's essentially Kyrie. And I didn't even get to the flat earth. I didn't, uh, no dinosaurs, uh, hate the Jews. I didn't get to any of that stuff. I left that out. All right, now, final point. So the Mavericks plan to, I'm going to turn the page from Kyrie and LeBron. So there's another story, the Mavericks, I, I love the phrase on this, the verbiage. The Mavericks plan to gauge the interest on television's Jeff Van Gundy to leave the boob tube and become an assistant coach in Dallas with Jason Kidd. Uh, Van Gundy, if you're old, you got to be really old now. Remember when Van Gundy was actually a coach and not just a talking head on television, but Jeff Van Gundy had an 11-year run with the Knickerbockers and the Houston Rockets, although it has been almost a generation since Jeff Van Gundy coached in Houston, 2007, it's, that's 16 years ago, the last time Van Gundy was an NBA head coach. So should Jeff Van Gundy consider leaving television to work with Jason Kidd's Mavericks? And uh, the answer is N to the O. No, 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 no. That's the answer. Absolutely not. 
And why would you want to take a step back? Jeff Van Gundy's got one of the plum gigs in all of sports. It's a wonderful job. And I, people like him. I, I'm okay. I think the people at TNT are better than him and the, whatever. But uh, Van Gundy's got some some good liners, some good one-liners. So he's living a pampered life. He's hanging out like an oligarch, uh, traveling around, luxury planes, trains, and automobiles. So he's got all that. Uh, he's got a direct pipeline to all of the robber barons who own these N- NBA teams. They all watch these these playoff games. And so he's on television. He's got some FaceTime with all of them. Everyone knows who he is. And it's an easy gig. You never lose any games. And people love your witty one-liners about random things like getting rid of all the halftime festivities and foul shots and all that, which is what he said last week. We talked about it on the show, and so he, he loves that. You're making millions of dollars. Why would you want to go – if you're going to go back to coaching, you'd go to become a head coach. And even that horse has left the barn. But why would you go be an assistant coach? The story here – and people are missing the story in this. The story is that is a vote of no confidence in Jason Kidd because not only – if the reporting is accurate, is Dallas considering making a run at Jeff Van Gundy? They've also tried to get horny, Jeff Hornacek. So they want to get horny in there, who's a former NBA head coach also. So that tells you that they are positioning to fire Jason Kidd if things don't go well the first half of next NBA season. That's the story. If you're going out to try to get somebody that's got a resume, a pedigree as a head coach, that tells me that you're hiring that person because, A, you think Jason Kidd doesn't know what he's doing properly on the sidelines, and, B, you want somebody there so when Kidd's the fall guy, you then replace him with whoever, whether it's Hornacek or Van Gundy. 